Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Dr. Tasha and I'm a breast cancer surgeon. If my mum had breast cancer, does that mean I will get it too? What is the BRCA gene and why is it important? How strong a role does genetics play in the development of breast cancer? These are common questions I get asked all the time and the answers may surprise you. In this video, I'm going to be going through seven questions related to breast cancer and genetics. So let's get started. Number seven, what is a BRCA gene? This is something that many people may not realize, but we all have the BRCA1 and BRCA2 genes. BRCA stands for breast cancer gene, and these genes are also known as tumor suppressor genes. Their function is to repair damage in the DNA, which otherwise, if left unrepaired, can contribute to the development of cancers. Now, when people say that I have the BRCA gene or carry the BRCA gene, what that actually means is they have an alteration or a mutation in these genes. And this results in the genes not being able to work properly. They're not able to repair damaged DNA as effectively as they could, and that's why cancer can develop. So if you carry a mutation in the BRCA gene, you're actually born with this and you inherited it from one of your parents. And I will talk about that in more detail later on. These BRCA genes are present in all cells all over the body. And the questions we don't have an answer to as yet is why is it that the mutation in these genes actually specifically increases the risk of cancer in the breast and the ovaries? Number six, if my mother had breast cancer, does that mean I will get it too? This is an extremely common question I get asked all the time. And the answer to this is not necessarily. The greatest risk factors for developing breast cancer is getting older and being a woman. And you might be surprised to hear that only five to 10% of breast cancers are genetically related. In other words, only five to 10% of breast cancers occur because of a mutation or alteration in the high risk genes. This means that the majority of breast cancers actually develop sporadically, they just develop. So if your mother had breast cancer, that doesn't necessarily mean that you will get it too. Number five, there are a few relatives from my father's side who have had breast cancer, but this doesn't count, right? Well, actually family history from both mother's and father's sides are equally as important. We have around 21,000 genes, half are inherited from our mother, the other half from our father. People think that you can only inherit an affected BRCA gene from their mother, but actually we have an equal chance of both mother and father passing it on to their children. We all carry two copies of the BRCA gene, one inherited from each of our parents. And so if you are found to have a mutation in the BRCA gene, that mutation will only be affecting one of your copies. So you will have a normally functioning other copy. So when you have children, whether you are female or male, you will pass on one or the other copy. And that is where the 50% risk comes in. Or put it another way, if one of your parents carry the BRCA gene mutation, you have a 50% risk of inheriting it. Number four, so how do you test for a mutation in the BRCA genes? For a person to have this test, blood needs to be taken, and this is then sent to the lab for analysis. This is usually arranged through your clinical geneticist or your doctor. I would actually advise against using over-the-counter gene testing kits because this can be unreliable and not particularly accurate or helpful. Number three, if I carry the BRCA gene mutation, does that mean I will for certain develop breast cancer? No, this is not necessarily true. The mutation in the BRCA gene predisposes to you developing cancer. However, for a cancer to develop, a second hit to the gene needs to happen first. At the moment, we don't know what that second hit specifically is, but environmental factors have been suggested to play a part in this. But the moment that second hit to that gene occurs, then the control of the cell division is affected and then cancer can develop. Number two, what is your risk of developing breast cancer if you have a mutation in the genes? Well, the population risk of developing breast cancer is around 12%, so that's one in eight. If you have a mutation in the BRCA1 gene, the risk of developing breast cancer is increased to between 60 to 80%, but truthfully, there is a range in risk. For certain families, this may be lower, but it is still several fold higher than the normal population. For BRCA1 mutation carriers also, the risk of getting breast cancer is higher in the younger age 
usually in your 30s or 40s. If you have a BRCA2 gene mutation, then the risk of developing breast cancer increases to about 45 to 60 percent and has a later stage of onset after the age of 50. You may also develop more than one primary cancer if you have a mutation in either of these genes. What about the risk of developing ovarian cancer? Well, if you carry a mutation in either of these genes, then the risk of ovarian cancer is also increased. The ovarian cancer risk in the population is around 2%, but if you carry the BRCA1 gene mutation, it increases to between 40 to 60%. For BRCA2 gene mutation, it increases between 20 to 30%. Men who carry BRCA gene mutations are also considered high risk of developing breast cancer, especially if it is the BRCA2 gene that is affected. The average man has a 0.1% risk of developing breast cancer. For BRCA1 mutation carriers, the risk is increased to about 2% and about 7% for BRCA2 mutation carriers. They are also at an increased risk of developing prostate cancer. And number one, what can I do if I carry the BRCA gene mutation? If this is the case, you have a few options that can reduce your risk of developing breast and ovarian cancer. And of course, these are discussions you will have with your doctors. You can have intensive screening, such as using an MRI, a mammogram, or both, depending upon your age. You can take medication, either tamoxifen or an aromatase inhibitor to reduce the risk of developing hormonally driven cancer. And of course, you can have surgery in the form of a risk-reducing mastectomy. And this can reduce the risk by up to 90%. For ovarian cancer, we would refer you to a gynecologist to discuss the possibilities of removing the ovaries and the fallopian tubes. This is usually done between the ages of 35 to 40 years for a BRCA1 mutation carrier, or 40 to 45 years if you're a BRCA2 mutation carrier. But of course, this is personalized to the individual. And the reason why we wait until those ages is because of the risks attached to an early surgically induced menopause, which is the consequence of such an operation. I hope this has answered some of the common questions and I will see you in the next video.